Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another book review video. Normally I do these review videos every single month, but I've been in a bit of a reading slump, but I am definitely out of it. So I read, I believe I have eight books to share with you, so I'll do it very quickly. I promise I will not dwell on too many of them. I'll just give you the synopsis of the books, my rating, what I felt about the book, and just move on. So hopefully this book this won't be too long, but I think I'll be back into my regular monthly book reviews, what I read the months, um, because I think I'm out of that slump for sure. Um, as always, I'm going to give you the Goodreads rating at the time of the filming. As always, I have my notes in front of me, so if you see me glancing down, that's what I'm doing. Um, I, read, I read pretty much exclusively ebooks. They're just easier for me to read because I read in bed. Um, they are definitely, definitely my preference though. Um, I find books at my local library through Amazon Prime Reading, um, which is free with your Amazon Prime service, um, through Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited, which is a pay service through Amazon, um, which there are a ton of books to choose from. Cannot recommend Kindle Unlimited enough. Through um, your library, you can use different apps to get, um, depending on whatever apps your library uses, you can get eBooks through there as well. So you just like check them out, just like a regular library books. Um, I, kind of fun fact, my office is actually in the public library. It's actually in a wing of the public library, our, our office is. So I could go to the end of the library, but I just prefer eBooks, I really do. Um, I do also find really good sales through Amazon and through Apple Books, but I normally will not pay over $3.99 a book. And it has to be like, it has to be like, I'll read all the reviews or an author that's just an automatic buy for me. So I am constantly perusing the Amazon and Apple Book apps for different books. Plus, I do use, um, I think it's called eReader IQ or something. I will have a link for it down below where you can link your Amazon wish list to this service and like your Amazon like Kindle wish list and you link that to this service and it tells you when the books go on sale, which that is, I, I love that. I absolutely love that because I use it all the time. Um, so if I found a book through Prime Reading or through Kindle Unlimited, I will let you know so that if you have those services, you know what to look for. Um, there'll be links to these services as well as links to each of the books goodreads page and their amazon page where you can read the reviews or purchase um, if you want to be friends on goodreads my link will also be down below so you can see what i'm reading <laughs> although there's a lot of times i start a book and then it'll be like sometimes if you ever uh, follow me on goodreads and you see i have four currently reading on there that's not really the truth i'll start a book and it automatically marks it as currently reading if you're using one of those apps and um, and I just don't go back and like uncheck it after I start reading another one. So sometimes I'll read like the first couple pages of a book and then I'll just go to another the other book. So I'm not really reading four books at one time. Okay, so these are reviews or I always do these reviews in order of how I read them, not in how I rate them. And the Goodreads rating that I give you will be the Goodreads rating at the time that I am filming this video because the ratings will fluctuate depending on as people, you know, rate the book. So it can change on a daily basis. So as of the, this taping, April 30th, 2022, this is the Goodreads rating for these books. Book number one was The Family Next Door by Sally Hepworth. The Goodreads rating was 3.84. My rating is four stars. Um, when I read that this is one of those ones where I had it on my wish list and the e-reader thing um, told me that it was on sale for $2.99 on Amazon and that's when I purchased it. So that was on April 2nd. I don't think it's currently on sale anymore, but that is another reason why, like I was saying, put things on your wish list, use this service because it is so good. Anyway, this is the third book that I have read by Hallie, by Sally Hepworth. Um, I would definitely continue to pick up books by this author. I really, really enjoy them. So this book takes place in a small suburb of Pleasant Court. It's kind of the place where everyone knows their neighbors and the children play in the street. You know, it sounds like a great little neighborhood. Um, Isabel doesn't fit into this picture of family paradise. Husbandless, childless, she soon catches the attention of three Pleasant Court mothers. So everybody on the street like has a family. She does not. Like they're wondering like, what is she even doing here? Like she has no kids, she has no husband. She's by herself in this big house. Like what the heck? Like she totally stood out. Um, but Ange, Fran, and Essie have their own secrets to hide. Uh, like the reason behind Ange's compulsion to control every aspect of her life, or why Fran won't let her sweet, gentle husband near her new baby, or why three years ago, Essie took her daughter to the park and returned without her. As their obsession with their new neighbor grows, it's, 
the secrets of these three women begin to spread and they'll soon find out when you look at something too closely, you see things you never wanted to see. Great synopsis. It really grabbed me from the very beginning. This book is told from the perspective of five women. So we have Essie, Barbara, who is one of the women's mothers, Fran, Ange, and Isabel. So as the story unfolds, we learn that each has this dark family secret. With each chapter, a little bit of each of their stories are revealed, which I love that. Um, the suspense leads to like this interesting twist that I did not see coming at all. Um, the only reason why I did not give this book five stars is because I didn't quite enjoy the last third of the book. Um, I felt like it, you know, it lost a little bit of its steam towards the end, which I hate that. I'd rather have a build up to a great ending than a great book all the way through and then it just kind of lets you down at the end. That's almost like an instant like star deduction for me. That being said, I do highly recommend this twisty like domestic drama. That's really what it is. Um, the characters are engaging, the story is addictive, and it's very, very well written. Um, if you enjoy books by Leanne Moriarty, which I have read, I feel like I've read four or five of her books. I really do think you'll enjoy Sally Hepworth's books. I feel like they're really, really similar with that whole domestic drama type vibe to them. Book number two, The Good Lie by A.R. Torrey. The Goodreads rating 4.21, my rating four stars. I found this book through Kindle Unlimited at the time of this taping. It's on Kindle Unlimited. This is the second book that I have read by A.R. Torrey. So far, this author has not disappointed me yet. Uh, this book follows a psychiatrist, Dr. Gwen Moore. She's an expert on killers. Yeah, kind of kind of creepy. That's who her like patients are. Um, she spent a decade treating California's most depraved predators and unlocking their motives. Predators much like the notorious Bloody Heart serial killer. Um, this, this killer's latest teenage victim escaped and then identified a local high school teacher, Randall Thompson, as his captor. The case against Thompson as the Bloody Heart Killer is damning and closed as far as Gwen and the media are concerned, if not for one new development. Defense attorney Robert Cavan is a still traumatized father whose own son fell prey to the Bloody Heart Killer, but he is convinced of Thomas Thompson's innocence, so he steps in to represent him. So weird, like what the heck, right? Now Robert wants Gwen to interview the accused, create a psych psychology, like a psychological file on him, of the killer and his victims and help clear his client's name. As Gwen and Robert grow closer and she dives deeper into the investigation, grave questions arise. So does Gwen's suspicion that Robert is hiding something. Aren't, aren't they all in books? They're all hiding something in books and that he might not be the only one with a secret. So this was one of those books that nothing was as it seems, like absolutely nothing was as it looked and as you deduced throughout the book, at least for me. There's twists and turns that you think you have all figured out and then a new one pops up that throws you off once again. Um, the multiple points of view help to like engage you further really into the story um, as you quickly come to realize that everyone is keeping secrets. Again, that's the typical norm thing. Um, I love that this book had really short chapters. I feel like the other book that I read by A.R. Tor Tori also had really short chapters um, because it just made you want to keep reading. It was really hard to put down because you think, oh, just one more chapter, but then the chapter is so short, and you're like, oh, okay, just another chapter and then another chapter. You just really could not like put it down. Um, if you really like fast paced, unpredictable reads that will just really keep you on the edge of your tire seat, definitely this one is for you. Book number three, The Best of Friends by Lucinda Berry. Goodreads rating 4.07, my rating four stars. I found this book through Kindle Unlimited. So we have best friends, Lindsay, Kendra, and Danny. They endure every parent's nightmare when a tragic accident befalls their teenage boys, leaving one dead, another in a coma, and a third too traumatized to speak. Reeling from the worst night of their lives, the three mothers plunge into a desperate investigation of the bizarre incident. How could something so horrible happen in their wealthy Southern California suburb? They soon discovered that the accident was just the beginning and troubling discoveries lead to chilling questions. Do they know their children? Do they even know each other? As more secret service surface, a fog of doubt and suspicion threatens to poison their families, their friendships, and the whole community. With the illusion of happiness and safety long gone, these women must now confront the hazards of heartbreak, the consequences of jealousy, and the dangers of living double lives. So there's a few reasons why this wasn't a five-star book for me, one of which was the confusing character narrative. 
Um, the mother and sons were really interchangeable, so I really had a hard time keeping up with who was who. Um, also, there were a couple things that were brought up outside the main like plot line that were never answered. So it really was like, why even include those in there? Because they were always like in the back of my mind. Are we going to come back to this? Like, did this ever get, did I just skim over this? So I don't like that because for me, I do like retain some of this stuff and it was really bothering me that it was never like ever brought up again. So don't like that. But bottom line though, I was really, really intrigued and invested in the story from start to finish. The ending, I really should have seen coming, but I did not. So overall, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed this book and highly recommend it to anyone who likes like family drama and suspense. Book number four, Find Me by Alifair Burke, Goodreads rating 3.64, my rating four stars. This is the third book by Alifair Burke that I read. So obviously I like this author and all of them have been really, really great thrillers. This book is about the disappearance of a young woman, Hope Miller. Hope has no idea who she actually is. 15 years ago, she was found in a small New Jersey town thrown from an overturned vehicle with no clue to her identity. Doctors assumed that her amnesia was a temporary side effect of her injuries, but she never regained her memory. Hope eventually started a new life with a new name in a new town that welcomed her, yet always wondered what she may have left behind or been running from. Now, 15 years later, she's leaving New Jersey to start over once again. Manhattan defense attorney, Lindsay Kelly, Hope's best friend and the one who found her after the accident understands why Hope wants a new beginning, but she worries how her friend will fare in the new East Hampton home, far away from anything familiar. Lindsay's worst fears are confirmed when she discovers Hope has vanished without a trace. The only lead a drop of blood found where she was last seen. Even more ominously, the blood matches a DNA, DNA sample with a connection to a notorious Kansas murderer. I didn't know going into this book that even though it was being sold by the author as a standalone, it does contain characters from the Ellie Hatcher series. I haven't read any of the Ellie Hatcher series, so I can tell you that not having read any of those series, it had zero impact on this book at all. For me, it really did a really good job of kind of summing up any like thing that people would need to know. However, I feel like those that have read the Ellie Hatcher series will want to read this book to complete that mystery. So I could, I feel like this is a huge mystery that must have ended in like a cliffhanger in the Ellie Hatcher, Hatcher series because this really sums it all up for Ellie. So I kind of feel like you have to read this book. So I thought that was a little strange that this was not put in to that series. Um, so I thought that was a little weird. Um, but for someone like me that likes to watch shows like Law & Order, this was a great crime fiction book. The book grabbed my attention from the beginning, held it the entire time, great writing as usual. The only thing the book lacked for me was the big twist at the end. The big twist was like revealed like in the last third of the book, like it, or like before the, the last third of the book. So about third way through, they revealed the big twist it just wasn't much so again the last part of the book was just kind of like okay you know now we're just talking about the other stuff like i don't know it just again one of those things where it built up you get that climax and then it's just like kind of just like okay the last of the book yeah this is great this is what happened um but i do recommend this book and along with anything else this author writes i feel like the author has is extremely good at writing really really good like i said as far as true crime fiction type writing um, I think I will definitely go back and read some of the Ellie Hatcher stuff, although this kind of like ruined it for me. So I feel like I don't even know if I can go back and read it. So a little disappointed on that fact, but other than that, really good writing, highly recommend this author. Number five, The Locked Door by Frieda McFadden, Goodreads rating 4.27, my rating five stars. Yes, we did have a five star book this month. I think I have one more too. Um, another great find on Kindle Unlimited. Um, this was my introduction to this author. I'll give you a little spoiler alert. I did read another one by her that I will talk about here in just a little bit. Um, oh my goodness, such a good author, you guys. I probably could have just read a ton of her books, but I like to mix it up, you guys know. So um, let's talk about the locked door. Some doors are locked for a reason. While 11-year-old Nora Davis was up in her bedroom doing homework, she had no idea her father was killing women in the basement until the police arrived at their front door. Decades later, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows her father was a notorious serial killer and she intends to keep it that way. She changed her name and everything. 
Then Nora discovers one of her young female patients has been murdered in the same unique and horrific manner that her father used to kill his victims. Somebody knows who Nora is. Somebody wants her to take the fall for this unthinkable crime, but she's not a killer like her father. The police can't pin anything on her as long as they don't look in her basement. <laughs> how does that synopsis not like reel you in? How, how many of you right now are writing this book down after just hearing me read the synopsis of that book? You guys, <laughs> this is such a good book. This book was amazing. The story is entirely told from the point of view of Nora, but it shuffles between like the past Nora as a child and the present Nora as the surgeon. Um, but it makes the plot all the more interesting because you're hearing, you know, you're kind of getting to know why she is the person she is and the things that she endured as a child. Um, the suspense is well developed, doesn't disappoint. The ending took me completely, I mean, absolutely completely by surprise. I. I honestly want you all going into this book as blind as I did. I literally read the synopsis, did not read any reviews or anything, and I just went right into it. I read reviews after reading this book, and many of the reviews say do not do the audio version of this book. Apparently the narrator is not very good, so keep that in mind, but y'all, let me know if you read this book, let me know if you plan on reading this book, and after you read it, um, send me a message on social media or comment on this video so we can talk about it because y'all, this is a good book. Book number six, The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Um, Goodreads rating 4.06. My rating, three and a half to four stars. I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence about this one. This is my fourth book by this writing team, and this is why I'm kind of on the fence, because this one was definitely one of my least favorite books so far by this writing team, but it is still worth picking up. I, I really do think you should pick it up. My rating may be lower than yours because I wanted this book with super high expectations since I have loved all the other books by these authors so much more. Like I think I gave all their other books four or five um, stars. And, and how many times do I tell you this is a fourth book by a person that I've read? I mean, that's just how much I love these books. I mean, this is like an instant buy for me for these authors. So this one really did disappoint me in a way just because, like I said, I went in with such high expectations. But don't let that deter you from reading it. Um, this one I actually checked out from the library. Um, well, so this one is about wealthy Washington suburbanites, suburbanites, Marissa and Matthew Bishop seem to have it all until Marissa is unfaithful. Beneath their veneer of perfection is a relationship driven by work and a lack of intimacy. She wants to repair things for the sake of their eight-year-old son and because she loves her husband. Enter Avery Chambers. So Avery is a therapist who has lost her professional license. Still, it doesn't stop her from counseling those in crisis, though they have to adhere to her unorthodox methods. Let me tell you, definitely unorthodox methods, a little bit strange. Um, and the bishops are desperate. When they glide through Avery's door and Marissa reveals her infidelity, all three are set on a collision course because the biggest secrets in the room are still hidden. And it's no longer simply a marriage that's in danger. So this book has a lot of characters, a lot, and a lot of side stories, and it's already a busy plot. So that's one of the reasons why I couldn't, it was hard for me to get into because it already just had, the plot was already so huge, and you'll understand that when you read it. And then you have all these side stories, and you have all these characters, and um, it was just, it was just so much going on, so busy, busy, busy. Um, as usual, though, the writing is so good. This writing team can write. I mean, they are so good. It flows. Um, and their books are usually, just so you know, if you've never read anything by them, I, for one, I wouldn't say this is the first book you should pick up by them, but um, most of their books kind of start out a little bit slower in the beginning, but this one seems to be take longer than normal to actually get into the action. Like, I feel like the other ones will just be a few chapters and you're kind of building up. This one, it took a lot longer. I think I was like over 50% before it started really getting good. Um, I was hoping for more of a wow factor too, more twists and turns, more thrilling moments, but overall I would recommend this book for people that are a fan of the genre for sure. It just, if you're a fan of these, of this writing team, I would say don't go into it with as, as high expectations as I did, but I definitely do recommend the book. Book number seven, The Surrogate Mother by Frida McFadden, Goodreads rating 4.32, my rating 4.5 stars. Obviously I'm now a fan of Frida McFadden. I will definitely be picking another one up. I'm sure in my um, May book review videos, I will have at least one of them in that review video. I honestly wanted to dive in again, like I said, several of her books that I found on Kindle Unlimited, but I do like to vary my authors that I read throughout the month. So this book is about Abby. 
Abby wants a baby more than anything, but after years of failed infer infertility treatments and adoptions that have fallen through, it seems like motherhood is just not in her future. That is, until her personal assistant, Monica, makes a generous offer that will make all of Abby's dreams come true, or all of her nightmares. So, because it turns out Monica isn't who she says she is, the woman now carrying Abby's child has dark, twisted secrets, and she will stop at nothing to get what she wants. So this book, y'all, this book. Okay, if you think you have an idea of what you're going into, so if you're like me, you watch a lot of like Lifetime movies, you read other books about surrogates, you're gonna be very surprised. This is not the typical like surrogate type situation. This story has many twists and turns, really, really good ones, by the way. And just when you think you have everything figured out and you're in shock by this twist that you are reading, then that final last twist happens and your mouth literally will drop open. Like, seriously, like, it, it's really rare that a twist will, like, really shock me. And then when you find out it's not what you think you're reading, and then it turns into something else, that's literally this. That, it was so good, too. Like, the way she did it was so good. So, you're asking me right now, why did I not give it five stars? The husband. <laughs> You guys know I get very, like, I cannot give five stars if there's a character in there that's super dumb. Like, I hate to say that. I hate, hate frustrating. He was so ignorant and frustrating. I just could not get past how clueless he was. And you guys know I've given low ratings on books because of characters like that. I mean, I just, characters you want to slap and shake and like, what the heck are you thinking? Like, I just, it was really hard for me to get past how clueless he was. However, don't don't worry about him don't worry about him because the rest of the book by far overshadows how my feelings were about the husband i don't want to spoil anything again i feel like with all of frida's books you have to go into them just reading the synopsis and then dive right in don't read reviews don't you know that's why i'm not giving anything away in my review except for the husband's frustrating just don't give up on him okay don't give up on him um Anyway, um, but Clueless Husband aside, this is an amazing, amazing suspense book that will keep you literally guessing until the very end. And the last book in this review video, the last book I read in the month of April was The Best, no, The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Goodreads rating 3.60, my rating 5 stars. So, you're, that doesn't usually happen very often. Usually, as you have noticed, my ratings are usually pretty similar to the Goodreads ratings. Um, this is my first Mia Sosa book. I was actually shocked when I saw the Goodreads rating on this. Again, I try not to read reviews for, for books unless I see a really low rating on a book that the synopsis sounds really good. So sometimes I'll go through and read non-spoiler reviews, but I didn't with this. Um, I didn't even look at the rating before I started reading this book. I literally found it. It was on sale for like $2.99. So I went ahead and just purchased it because it sounded like a really good book. And the second companion novel to this book was coming out. And I thought, if I really like this, it'll be a great like series for me to pick up. So I did. This book is about Lena. She's a wedding planner left at the altar. So sad. Um, Lena is a top wedding coordinator in DC. After impressing an influential wedding guest, she's offered an opportunity that could change her life. There's one hitch. She has to collaborate with the best, make that the worst man from her own failed wedding. Tired of living in his older brother's shadow, we have marketing expert Max. He is determined to make his mark with the coveted hotel plant, looking to expand its brand. Then he learns he'll be working alongside with his brother's whip-smart, stunning, absolutely off-limits ex-fiance. And she loathes him. If they can survive the next few weeks and nail their presentation without killing each other, they'll both come out ahead. Except for Max has been publicly public enemy number one ever since he encouraged his brother to jilt the bride and Lena is ready to dish out a little payback of her own. This book has some predictable moments, but honestly, it's okay. That's why I love to read rom-com books. I mean, you know what's gonna happen for the most part, but this one does have some surprises in it. Um, this was definitely a really light read, perfect to lighten up the mood, perfect to get you out of a reading slump if you're in one. I laughed out loud several times. It was sweet, had some steamy moments. Um, I really, really loved how the author weaved um, some Brazilian culture into it as, the, as well. Um, I am a sucker for like enemies to lovers type 
you know, tropes as well. Like, I'm also a huge, huge fan of, like, wedding planner storylines. I don't know. I've read a couple books about with wedding planners, and I don't know. I just love that. I love, like, in, actually any event planner books. Just the fact I really get into those really, really well. But also The Enemies to Lovers is one of my favorite, like, romance-type things in a book. But I do recommend this one, and I said the other one, I believe, just came out. It's called The Wedding Crasher. Um, so I definitely will be picking that one up. I'm going to see if my library has it and I'll pick that one up and then I'll let you guys know what I think about that. I don't know if I'll be picking up this next month, but I definitely loved this book. And for me, it's a five star read. I don't, you know, judge roman romantic comedy type books very harshly because I feel like if they kept my interest, they made me laugh. They have, you know, the, all the moments and all the, you know, good stuff going on to me that most of them are five stars. So definitely love this book. I don't know. Again, I haven't still haven't read the review, so I don't know why people didn't like this book, but I really, really liked it. So check it out and that'll do it you guys for this month's book reviews. Again, I'm going to be getting back into this again. I probably won't have so many, so I'm sorry. This video is a little bit longer than my normal book review videos, um, but I'm so happy to be out of my reading slump and I think I may still be two books behind on my reading goal for the year. My goal for the year is always to try to do like about four books a month. So about 48 books a year. And I think I am a couple behind. So we need to play some catch up. Anyway, check out the description box for links to their Goodreads, to their Amazon. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.